Or did you go because to school for art? <laughs> I didn't. I took a minor. I took a minor in my undergrad, but um, I didn't think you could make any money in art. I didn't. I wasn't going to tell my parents like, hey, I'm going to be an artist. I feel like we were like a, just a working class family in Missouri, you know, like they're not going to be like, yeah, sure. I'll pay for your college so you can be an artist. Like that was yeah. not even a possibility, you know, I mean, or at least I didn't think it was so. Yeah, because that is the funny thing. Like growing up, my parents always told me to pursue it. And they're like, oh, you're going to go on to be an animator and do all this stuff. But you never have the conversation of like one, how does that happen? Or two, like, how do you make a living at it? And three, do you do it your own way? Do you find people to go pay you to do it? Or how are you? Yeah, none of those questions come up when you're in high school trying to pursue it. The parents are always just like, we encourage the creativity, which yeah, I, I assume right. they did, aside from grounding you for making a mess while you did it. <laughs> yeah, like for the most part, and except for when I was creative with like, you know, talking, they didn't like that. But like, <laughs> <laughs> I get what you're <laughs> they um they they were supportive but they were always like you know like this is you know i don't know i always got the feeling that that wasn't really a job you know uh -huh. so and that's why i started the podcast because i think that people do find they can make a job out of it and that's what, exactly what you said is like there's not enough discussion about it like how do you if you're an artist how do you go about putting together the pieces to like actually support yourself. You and know, that's There's actually a good question. I want to ask you that right back. How do you go about doing that as an artist? For me, my story is, is that I have a full-time job uh -huh. and then I do art, you know, some people actually can, and, but, there's certain opportunities that I have where like somebody might commission a piece or so, there might be, a, um, there's like certain things that go around like in New York city or in, in the area over here. Like for instance, during Halloween, we used to do pumpkin painting and we get paid, you know, up to $150 per pumpkin that we painted, these huge pumpkins, right? And so like just making money in that way, but it's nothing that would support me for the whole year, you right. know? So, well, and you could paint the pumpkins all year, but it, people just wouldn't but want them. Wants them. <laughs> yeah, right. So like, it's just, it's, it's the continuum. It's like that threshold of like, I couldn't spending 40 hours doing art every week, I wouldn't have the time, you know, and then I'd have to give up the job. So it's like, you're kind of in the middle of a, a catch 22 situation. At least I feel that way for myself. Yeah. And when you were saying painting pumpkins, you said, uh, we paint the pumpkins. Is there, do you work with a group of people or? Yeah. It's a, it's like a, a show. It's called the rise of the jack-o'-lanterns that is in like three or four different locations in New York and Jersey. And then they also, they're in Chicago as well at the botanic garden oh. and um they yeah we and then we carve them out not we don't ever cut through the skin but it, it creates this really cool graphic if you do you know ink layers different um grades and then you know the top layer is carving and then shining the light through it gives it almost like a holographic look yeah you do like the <laughs> the sculpture like using the peeler or something to kind of sculpt into this to the rind or whatever yeah yep how did you get hooked up with that I found it on Craigslist. Oh, there you go. Yeah. No, I used to, yeah, I used to like hustle around. I used to like uh, do paint nights at different bars and libraries and stuff like that. But like at the end of the day, I was only kind of picking up like a couple extra hundred dollars every so, you know, every week, every other week or something like that. Nothing, nothing that was like paying my rent in New York, you yeah. know, so. You did the paint nights. Were you running those or you found places, yes. people that were, you were running them. So how would you, how would you advertise doing stuff like that? Like setting up an event, it's, it's easy to set up an event to get people to come to event an event is what's oh. difficult. Well, I mean, now it's not because nobody can go to events, but when yeah, you were right. setting up events, like how would you get people to show up? What were some of the methods you, methods you used? Um, I, well, first off I went to the libraries, so oh that was easier because they already had a demographic. So I was like, Hey, I mean, I, and I knew that they worked quarterly. So I'd be like, let's do a fall paint night. Are you interested? And they're like, yeah. And then they pay you a flat rate and the patrons don't have to pay. You know, oh. a lot of times like you have these free evenings. So then I don't, I'm not, I'm not in the boat. I don't have to do anything to facilitate who's coming. I just have the painting and the supplies. It's probably so, like it's because they have a grant where they have to fulfill different types of activities for people to do. Yep. So they like they have to have programming. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. 
Well, that's fun. What kind of other stu- stuff did you do? This is fascinating. You've done pumpkin carving <laughs> and now you're doing paint nights. Like what other things yeah. have you done? Um, so at, there's a, I wouldn't necessarily get paid, but a lot of times some of these outdoor like rave like parties, I guess what we would call raves, people are, right, I don't know how old you are, but like, you know, <laughs> people born in that partied in the nineties, right? Right. We call them raves and they'd have like live painters. So they'd say, Hey, come out, you know, they don't pay you anything or maybe they pay you like 20 bucks or something. But sometimes at the parties, people would buy the painting right off the easel from you while you're out there live painting. Oh, wow. So, cool. Yeah, so I, I got in, I got hooked up with a couple of those things and, you know, sold a couple of paintings, had a good time, you know, hung out with people playing, you know, DJs and stuff like that. So those were fun. It just was, it's just like I say, you know, like I never found those situations where you're getting paid like a lot of money that's going to like really carry you through the next month, you know, so. Yeah. And when you did these things, would you just kind of wing it and like paint whatever, or would you come with a plan for what to paint? Because painting live is it's like people are watching you and that's kind of yeah. something to get over in the first place too. Like, let alone you're, you're taking the initiative and going out to these events, but yeah, for people doing that, it's also scary to have people looking over your shoulder while you're doing these things. So what, what was your game plan usually when you would go out there? Just whatever or what? Sometimes. Um, I just try to like be part of the the vibe you know like I just try to like kind of you know I have a splashy style I don't I never really start a painting out with like what I'm gonna paint like the, a thing you know yeah. I'm just like I kind of moving stuff around and then you know eventually something will come out and I'll just run with it and sometimes it turns out stupid <laughs> you know? like, yeah. that's why you, you bring you bring a couple of canvases and you're like oh yeah oops and then slip it away tur- you start a new one but people are always interested in that white canvas and then all those first marks they're like oh yeah wow and, you know, i don't know if they're like on drugs or whatever but, like, <laughs> at the raves they may be 